Welcome to our Faith Family Church broadcast. My name is Stanley Scott II. I'm the senior pastor here in Houston, Texas at Faith Family Church. I'm so excited that you've joined us today to receive this message from the Lord. So as we get into this message, let me encourage you, write down these scriptures, take some notes, and get ready to experience a better life than the one you've been living. To meditate your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask that you shine the light of your word to us today by the Holy Spirit. Let not one of us leave confused. Let every one of us understand what you are saying to us personally and individually. Let this message today mark our lives in such a meaningful way that we will never be the same. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Not only do we welcome you, we welcome everybody that will be online with us and listening to this in the future in the name of Jesus. Open with me in your Bible, if you would, to two openings of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 54. We're going to look at verse 1 through 4, or parts of it, as we continue our series, just a four-part series, on the subject of expansion. Expansion. In Isaiah, which is our foundational text for this message, verse 2 and 3 is what I want to look at today. Verse 2 says, To enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out your curtains, or the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. That verse, number two, is a expansion verse. He's talking about you enlarging and stretching out and lengthening, going beyond the borders and boundaries of where you have been. I've spent months meditating on this as I believe that God is prophesying into your life expansion. That he's encouraging you to see beyond where you are right now. See yourself going further than you've gone and doing more than you've done and being able to have more than you've had. And Hallelujah. This is an expansive verse. Verse 3 says, For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities Inhabit it. How many of you all can see in verse 3 that God is talking about expansion? Little did I know, I, 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 do, I did know to go to verse 2, but I didn't know that verse 3 actually talked about or uses the word expand. If you want to know what 2020 or the, the future years are about to look like for yourself, it is expansion. Amen. You're going to be able to expand on the right and the left. In Matthew chapter 9, which is our second text message, uh, text message, wow, <laughs> my mind is running 30 miles an hour, come on. Our second text, foundational text for this message, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, it says, Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. This verse is talking about the followers of Jesus. Do I have anybody here who follows Jesus? Well, he said, when the bridegroom is taken away, my disciples will fast. And the reason why they will fast is because you can't put a, a, a new patch on an old garment. When, you know, when you wash it, one will rip away from the other and both of them will be ruined. And it's the same way that you can't put new wine into old wineskins because it's expensive. It, it, it will expand and burst the old because it you know, doesn't have uh, the, the expansiveness as it has had before, and it'll burst in ruin. But you put new wine into new wineskins. Now, if you don't know this, you are the new wineskin that's about to receive the new wine. Boy, I wish I could talk about that. 
you are about to expand in ways that your mind can only imagine. So we're going to talk today about the third part of this, which is receiving expanded. The first part, of course, we looked at, which was your vision being expanded. The second part we looked at last week was that we're going to see miracles expanded in our lives. The third part of this we'll look at today is that we are going to see in our lives this year our receiving expanded. Say that with me, receiving expanded. And then the fourth one we'll look at next week, which I can't wait for, well I can, but I'm looking forward to is our love will be expanded. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's start today in Luke chapter 6. Let me set this up for a moment. So, each week the Lord will give me an emphasis through the Scripture, a message from His Word that we're supposed to take home and apply to our lives. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 is a verse that you've heard before, but I want you to also see in this verse expansion. In verse 38, the Bible says this, not just the Bible, Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. I want to talk to you today about your maximum capacity of receiving. Because what God is declaring over your life is that your life is about to be expanded. And particularly, your receiving is about to be expanded. Notice in this verse, he says, give and it will be given unto you. A lot of times, especially in churches, you know, we're encouraging people to be generous. To live big and give big. Come on, somebody. You hear a lot of talk about giving, but oftentimes you don't hear much talk about receiving. Well, the Bible tells you that when you give, it will be given back to you. In other words, you will always, somebody say always, you will always receive back when you give. Someone said it a long time ago and it's worth repeating, you can't outgive God. When you give, it will be. Man, that'll preach by itself. When you give, I know you're not giving to get. Amen. But when you give, one thing that you can expect, it will be given back to you. And then Jesus goes off. I like when Jesus goes off. He says, it's going to be good given back to you. Good measure. Matter of fact, at the end of this verse, he says, with the same measure that you use with all, it'll be measured back to you. That means if you give in hundreds, then then it's going to be measured back to you in hundreds. If you give in thousands, it will be. I know you didn't give to get. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you what the word, not just the word. I'm telling you what Jesus has prophesied and declared over your life. He says when you give, it will be. I'm just trying to get you ready to receive what God has in store for your life this year. Good measure. Press down. Now you can't read this verse without thinking about raking leaves. Because if you've ever been out there raking leaves, You know you can't just fluff the the bag full and go on to the next. You'll use up all your bags. No, you've got to do what? Press it down. Why are you doing that? You're, You're trying to make room so, oh, come on, so the bag can receive more. God is saying make room because he's about to pour more into your life. Press down. How about this? When you push it in, you shake it together. Get get it all to settle down. Press down, shaking together, and then what? Run. Y'all help me now. Running over. 
I mean, it's running over the top. I mean, when is it full? It's, it's too full. You can't even close the top. You're carrying it over to the garage and the leaves are just falling all over. It will be put into you. I know it says your bo- bosom, but, but I want to emphasize that because you have been giving and helping family and helping friends and looking out for them, giving to the church, giving to God, God is declaring in this year you are about to see yourself, your receiving expanded in ways that you have not imagined. I mean, it's already happened this year. Praise God. Faith Family Church received an amazing offering. One of the biggest offerings in the history of our church. Glory to God. It's happening already. To me, that's just a confirmation because I got this message long before the gift showed up. And God is confirming his word. In other words, I'm declaring that some of you this year are going to come into large sums of money. And it'll be because... Oh, I got a couple amens on that. I, I don't know if I'm in the right church today. I'm just saying what the word of God. He says it will be put into your bosom but for the, with the same... Calm down, Stan. Slow down and get the message out. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You know, when he says a good measure pressed down and running over, he's talking about your giving expands your capacity of receiving. That's what he's saying in this verse. Your giving expands your capacity of receiving. When he talks about running over, I mean, we quoted it right before the service. When he talks about running over, we quoted it right before, right before the service. In Psalm 23 and stanza 5, the Bible says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup does what? Run over. Now listen, no weapon formed against you will prosper. There will be those that arise up against you this year. I wish I could prophesy that things would be easy for you this year, but I can't. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if if Jesus overcame the world and you have Jesus, that makes you more than a conqueror. Come on. That makes you a world overcomer. And this verse confirms it. He says, I'm going to prepare a table before you right while they're talking about you. Right while they're doing you wrong. Right while bad things are happening, I'm going to be bringing out the dinner. Come on, I'm going to be bringing out the roast. I'm going to be bringing out the macaron. Come on, right in the midst. I'm going to make sure that goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. He says, you anoint my head with oil. Now watch this though. My cup runs over. I want you to imagine if after church you went to the restaurant and, you know, man, the waitress is just so eager. I mean, they are so nice. I mean, can I get you? I mean, just constant. I mean, checking on you even when you weren't expecting it. How many of y'all appreciate good service? Amen. Well, the Lord, he became our servant. Amen. He serves us. And so I want you to imagine that waiter coming to refresh your drink and they're just talking and, and you know, and they're pouring your cup. And I mean, it wasn't even half empty or half. It wasn't even half full. Come on. And some cups for somebody is half empty. Oh, help me now. But, they, but they're going to fill up the cup and they get to talking and all of a sudden oh, it's just running. Oh, and you're like, hey, hey, hey. And you're like, yeah, I know. I, I just I just want to make sure you it's just full and running over. I want you to imagine God pouring into your life and you're like, God, I'm full. Come on, God, I don't have need for anything else. And he says, I know, but I just want to pour and pour. Come on, come on, come on. I just want to see when when God overflows your life and you're a generous person anyway, that overflow, you can't contain it anyway. He knows you're going to give it out anyway. And your giving expands your capacity to receive. You can't outgive God. In Philippians chapter 4, 
another very, very important scripture in this message. In Philippians 4 and verse 15, the Bible, Paul says, now you Philippians, he was writing to the church at Philippi, just like I'm ministering to the church in Houston. You Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Paul started the church there in Philippi, and he was an apostle. He raised up a pastor to minister to the people. And he would travel, and he would communicate with them, and they would communicate, obviously, write letters. And he's writing a letter to the, Philipp- the Philippians. And he says, now you all know that when I started this church... No other church communicated with me about the subject of giving and receiving, but you only. In other words, they wrote to him and they said, how does this giving and receiving thing work? Come on, talk to me. They communicated. They they talked to him. How does this giving and receiving thing work? I want to focus. A lot of times we talk about the giving part. Today, I really want to talk about the receiving part. And I want you to take the position as the church of Philippi and really ask yourself the question, you know, God, how does this receiving thing work? Because I've been given and given. I've been given and given and given. Come on, somebody. And I actually need some receiving. How many of you can stand a little more receiving in your life? Well, they wrote to him about the subject, how does this receiving thing work? The Holy Spirit prompted me to go through the Word of God and look at scriptures that talk about the receiving part. Ooh, this is good. In in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 9, Peter said, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. We'll get the benefit of reading our chapters this week and we'll get to see the context. But how many of you all can see that in verse 9, he's talking about the receiving part. And God is expanding your capacity to receive. What is he saying? Your receiving is connected to your faith. He said receiving the end of your faith. Um, the end of your faith is manifested grace. The end of your faith, say it out loud, is manifested grace. What that means, and I have to help you because if you don't understand it, you won't do it, right? And if you're going to focus on the receiving part, it's got to be connected to the believing part. In other words, when you have faith, faith is a firm persuasion. It's a conviction based upon something you've heard. So when you have faith, it's not based on what you see. Oh, come on. The Bible says that we walk by faith. Y'all help me now. And not by sight. See, your receiving is not connected to your paycheck that you can see. Mm. Your receiving is not connected to what's going on in the home and in the family. What's going on in your single life. What's going on in your, in your, in your body. Your receiving is connected to your faith. The question is, what are you believing to receive? Some of you all need to start your own improvements project. Father, I'm believing for an extra $10,000 to be able to do furniture or whatever it is that you're believing for. Rather than work for a living, believe God to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. If you want a new home for your family, believe God for it. Thank God for doing work and being diligent. But He said, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you what? Receive them and you will have them. Now watch this. The end of our faith, when faith comes to an end, it is manifested grace. Leave it right there. I want to show you this. This verse indicates that faith also has a beginning. Faith begins where the will of God is known. When you hear that God wants you to be blessed, healed, and prosperous, 
faith at that moment begins. When you hear that it's not God's will for you to be sick, at that moment, faith in your heart begins. When does it end? It ends when what you believe for shows up. Come on, somebody. When the thing that you have been praying about and believing for shows up, that's the end of your faith. What what receiving is connected to is the end of your faith. And what the end of your faith is, it's when grace manifests. Can I talk about that? Is this too much? Does this feel like class? I don't know if y'all know you can you can learn something when you come to church, and you should. I mean, you ought to leave full. Like, whoa, that was just too much. I didn't expect all of that. Amen. I like to, to feed us on the Word of God. Amen? Grace is when you get something you don't deserve. Let's think about it. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve. And grace is when you... Get something that you don't deserve. So let's say you were striving a little too fast. Woo! <laughs> Justice in that moment is you getting a speeding ticket. Mercy in that moment is you getting off on a warning. Grace is when the officer comes to the car and gives you a gift certificate. <laughs> Anybody ever had that happen? No. (laughs) Grace is God's unmerited favor. It's God giving you something that you don't deserve. Now let's keep going. In Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible talks about receiving in verse 28. Notice this. It says here, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. By which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Notice these words, receiving grace and God. The Bible talks about you and I receiving grace from God. Yeah, Matter of fact, in the next, in the next, um, in the next one, of, in the next scripture, uh, in John chapter 1. The Bible talks about you receiving something. This got good all of a sudden. Look up at me for one moment. Don't put the scripture up. I didn't say 16. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible talks about you and I receiving something from God that we don't deserve. I got to stay there for a minute because I don't know about you. I don't deserve to be standing up here being a preacher. Because if you knew some of the sins of my life in the past, you would know that I've been disqualified many times over from the ministry. But I'm not standing up here by what I've earned. I'm not standing up here by what I deserve. I'm standing up here by the grace of God. The reason why I say that some of us in here have messed up really bad. We've taken some wrong turns. We've done things that we have no business doing. But I'm here to tell you, you don't get from God good because you're good. You get from God good because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Oh, man, this is good to me today. What I'm saying to you, stop thinking and seeing yourself in the light of your past life, in the light of your mistakes, in the light of your sin, thinking that, well, I don't deserve it. Well, I don't. And you're not even believing to receive the goodness of God in the land of the living. Calm down. Calm down. So what I'm saying to you today is that the Bible, the Bible talks about you and I receiving grace from God, receiving something from God that we don't deserve. And he's saying enlarge. See, he's saying lift up your eyes right now. Stop looking and saying, well, it ain't, well, it ain't, you know, it'd be a better chance for me to get married than to be be a better chance for me to be struck by lightning than to be... No, he said, lift up your eyes. 
see the harvest already. See the new job. See the new car. See the better relationship. See the increase by faith. In John chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible says, matter of fact, it says that of his fullness, we have all what? Received and grace for grace. Does the Bible talk about you and I receiving grace? Receiving something that we don't deserve. When you look at this in the New Living Translation, I love it. It says, for from his abundance. Woo! What is abundance? Abundance is when it's good measure, pressed down, come on, shaking together, and what? Running over from His running over abundance, we have all received. Listen, in order for you to be receiving, somebody's got to be given. And God is the one that's given, and you're the one that'll be doing the receiving. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. That's what you and I can expect this year. In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it just keeps going. I wish I had the time to look at all of them. In verse 17, he says, For if by the one man's offense death reigned by or through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace, And of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one, through the one, Jesus Christ. Um, Can I talk to you all just for a moment? If you don't have a good church home, like Faith Family Church, we welcome you here. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What's happening here, if you're new here, if this is your third or fourth time, or if you're first time here, I am feeding the flock of God the Word of God. We don't just take one verse of Scripture and then say a lot of unique and powerful things about one verse. What I hope you all see is how supernaturally connected all of these verses are. When I study, it's almost overwhelming to me to see what I see. I mean, from his abundance and that we receive one gracious blessing after the other. And then he takes me to another verse that says, for those of us who receive abundance, it's like he's saying the same thing, but from a different perspective. Amen. Now, let's look at this. You are those who have received abundance of grace. Notice he says in this verse, those who receive abundance of grace, getting what they don't deserve, they will reign in life. Let me ask you a question. Are you reigning in life right now? Or is life reigning over you? In the Amplified, verse 17 says, For because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing or abundance of grace, his unmerited favor, meaning you getting something you don't deserve, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them in a right standing with himself, they will reign as kings in life. Let me ask you. Are you reigning like a king in this life or is life reigning over you? Because we're supposed to, hey, we're 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 the kings that he's king of. The Bible says that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We are supposed to, because of receiving the abundance of grace, be able to live like a king in this life. I'm not talking about in the by and by. You were not meant to struggle. You were not meant to barely get by. You were not meant to live a sick and and, and beggarly life. 
He intends to overflow your life with the abundance of grace until you live like a king on this planet. Amen? Amen. In Luke chapter 12, and I get ready to close with this, the most important part of the message. Like I said, he always gives me a a particular verse. We started in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. But throughout the entire time, this was the first passage that was gone to me, that, that came to me, about receiving expanded. So as we, as we see this verse, I want you to find yourself in this, and I want you to see what we've been seeing through it. Amen? Watch this. In Luke 12 and 15, he said to them, Jesus said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. We have to pause there for a moment to make sure that we're standing in the moment that Jesus is speaking. He says, I want you to pay attention and beware of wanting something that somebody else has. See, that iPhone 8 was was good. I mean, as a matter of fact, there wasn't nothing wrong with it. But they came out with that one with the three eye, the three cameras on the back. And your co-worker got it. Now all of a sudden you want one. And you sign up again for $35.99 for 24 months. Easy payments. Because you wanted something that somebody else had. Just want what God wants for you. Amen. It's more than enough. He can do exceeding abundantly above, beyond all that you can ask or think. But watch wanting what somebody else has. That's what he's, and so he's about to tell a story about somebody who was covetous. They wanted what somebody else had. Watch this. Um, Go back for me one more time. I'm sorry. He said, beware of covetousness. And then he says, for your life doesn't consist in the abundance of the things that you possess. Well, Pastor, didn't you just basically tell us that we're about to receive abundance like we've never experienced before? Yes, in this year... You're going to rec- your receiving is going to be expanded. That y- your, your salary at the end of the year is going to be better than the end of that last year. I mean, just every aspect of your life is going to be better and expanded like you can only imagine. Are you saying, though, but he's saying that, yeah, but he's saying your life doesn't, it's not just about you having abundance. You're going to have abundance, but beware. Why should I be aware? He says, well, let me tell you a story. The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. When you think about the word plentifully, you could say abundantly. I want you to see yourself as this man. Because your ground is about to yield plentifully. Your giving is about to return, good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Just like this guy, he had a ground and it brought forth plentifully. He thought within himself, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? When you think about Isaiah 54, he says, stretch out, enlarge, lengthen your cords, make more room for your dwelling, right? Notice, He's he's receiving more than he has room to contain. And he says, what am I going to do? I got too much. It's running over. I have no room to store my stuff. So he said, I'll do this. I'm going to pull down my barns and build greater And there I will store all my crops and my goods. First of all, I want you to see that this verse is talking about expansion. He says, man, we'll have no more room in the church. 
We're going to go get a bigger one. We don't have no more room in the house. So we're going to go get a bigger one. Now he's saying beware. Oh, I think one person got that. So now, now make sure you're hearing this right because you're about to experience this and you want to make sure you receive it the right way because you can receive it the wrong way and by this time next year, you're on vacations instead of coming to church. The God that got you this message, come on, you done left. <laughs> so he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take down my stuff and I'm going to build greater. How many of y'all see he's talking about expanding? And I'm going to say to my soul, soul, you have many good laid, many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, actually, God wants you to live a good life of ease, to eat, drink, and be merry. But there's still something wrong with this. What, why? why? What, what's going on? The next verse says that God said to him, fool. You don't want God to say to you, fool. My mama said this a lot. Ain't no fool like an old fool. (laughs) So don't be an old fool. Now listen carefully now because there will be some wonderful things that will happen to you. God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. And then who will those things be which you have provided? And then he says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself. And is not rich toward God. See, if we're going to receive the right way, then we need to make sure that we maintain a heart that's rich toward God. Amen? Because if you just get to the point where you're receiving, you're receiving, you're receiving, you're receiving, he's, you're receiving so much, it's overflowing, but you stop giving. Oh, I'm preaching good. The thing that got you to where you are, you stop. I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of mine. I'm going to take care of ours. And you stop. God wants you to be in a place where you're stored up for many years, but you have to maintain a heart that is rich toward God. Let me close with this. Number, uh, <clears throat> the point I want you to take, take from this. It's one thing to expand yourself. As a result of wanting more. But it's another thing to have the Lord say to you, expand. It's okay to get a bigger house. It's okay to to take a new job. But if that bigger house and that new job takes you away from God. Have you really missed the mark? Make sure you maintain a heart that's rich towards God. In James chapter 5, oh, glory to God. James 5 and 7 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. I'm going to conclude this message by telling every one of you here and listening online as a result of everything I have prophesied to you through this message, be patient. If it doesn't happen in January, don't give up hope. If it doesn't happen in February, don't get frustrated. I'm here to tell you, receiving is coming. He is about to pour out what you don't deserve. And he uses a farmer. The farmer doesn't just look at the hand on the clock and say, well, we got to take the harvest. No, he's waiting until the harvest receives a good rain. So that when he takes it to market, it'll be full of water. Come on. (laughs) And that's what he's saying to you. Wait until the rain of God poured out on your life. Don't stop short. Don't quit early. Receive the early and the latter rain. Receive the early and the latter rain. In 1 Kings, 
verse 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. If I could express to you how powerful this is on the inside of me, it's like in my spirit I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. The rain of God about to be poured out on your life. Some of you are going to receive the rain in fullness. It's going to cause abundance. And I'm telling you, like the prophet told them, I hear the sound of abundance. And then one last verse. And this one is the clincher. This seals the deal. Your ground, God says, is about to bring forth plentifully. I prophesy it's harvest time, says the Lord. You've been sowing and sowing. And it's time now for you to be reaping and receiving. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14, the Bible says, Stand up on your feet. Glory to God. Woo! Hoo, 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 hoo. Did you get anything out of this today? In Deuteronomy chapter 11, I want you to see how prophetic. Now listen, somebody asked me, because, you know, it almost sounds like I'm saying pathetic. I'm saying this is a prophetic word. It's it's a word of prophecy. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, this scripture came to me in confirmation. See, God confirms his word in the mouth of two or three witnesses. You see the abundance of grace and you see the overflowing grace and abundance and, and the abundance of rain and the early and the latter rain. And then you see in Deuteronomy 11, 14, I, God says, will give you the rain in your land or for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, so that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil. Do you all see that? He's saying, now he's not talking to an agricultural, you all are not an agricultural society unless you own a farm. He's saying, I'm about to pour out rain on everything you have in a way like you haven't imagined. It's going to receive an early and a latter rain together in the same month. And he's going to rain on your life so that you can gather it in. Somebody say it's harvest time. You're going to receive new wine. Father, we just thank you.